Hi, I'm Chris Bailey and I am a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. Okay, so you've downloaded Blender, you went online, you saw some cool artwork and you thought, I want to get in on the action. I hope you're excited. If you've never touched 3D before, this is the video for you. Buckle up. Let's get started. Now, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com if you're interested in learning a lot more about how to do 3D art in Blender. Got tons of extra content there to check out, so go have a look. All right, so let's talk about where we want to go today. You've gotten Blender most likely because you want to make a 3D image, right? So clearly, the thing you want to end up with today is a render. It's an image that you can show someone uh, that you've made in 3D. So we've got a couple of fundamental steps we've got to cross in order to get there. Now I'm going to explain this as if you have never touched any kind of software like this ever before, okay? Now the first thing you need to be aware of with Blender is that we have these different windows that we're looking at. We've got the 3D viewport, we've got this little scene collection, we've got this weird one over here, there's another one down here, they're all over the place. Uh, Blender's got a lot of windows to them and uh, it's important that you remember at each window we do a different type of work. Now in our main viewport probably the first thing you want to do when you jump in is you want to be able to move around in that 3D environment right? Now there's a couple of ways to do it. The simplest is if you come over into your viewport and you make sure your mouse is over this 3D viewport and you click with your middle mouse button. So you click and hold your middle mouse button and drag around you're going to start to get this orbit action. Okay. Now, if you want to begin to move around in that scene, you can hold down the shift key and now with the middle mouse button, you can click and now you can actually move around the space side to side and up and down. All right. Then if you roll your mouse wheel, you're going to be able to zoom in in these increments. If you want to move something in Blender, you just left click on it and it will highlight, but then you need to activate the move tool. Now, in order to do that, we've got this little handy group of tools off to the side and we've got this one here, which is the move tool. If you hover over anything in Blender, you're going to get a tool tip pop up and that will explain what it does. We also have the rotate and the scale tool. You'll be using these all the time. Now, it tells you as well, if you hover over this, the shortcut key and you can see that uh, it says shortcut shift space bar comma G. Now, those are two different shortcuts. The second one, G, which uh, in Blender world, we'd say refers to grab is probably the one you'll, you'll use the most. So if you hit G, you can grab. And the way this works is you hit it and you're in grab mode. And now wherever I move my mouse will move. Now if I click somewhere, it will release me from grab mode and it will place the object in that spot. I could also hit G and hit escape and that will actually cancel the move. So say, look, I don't want to move it. I can also just click up here. And if I click up over here, I get these handles, in which case you can just click and drag on the red, green and blue handle to move it around in those directions. Now these are actually three really important directions. You can see them highlighted right here. In Blender, up is represented by the Z direction or the Z direction, depending on which part of the world you live in. X is forward and back and Y is side to side. So let's click on our cube again. Now we can move this wherever we want. Let's talk about how to add something into the scene. Now I'm going to use the next command. So up here on this top menu bar, there's a thing here called add. I can click add and it gives me a list of all the different types of things that I can add. Now some of these are pretty complicated like force fields, but a lot of these under the mesh thing here are pretty straightforward. They are what you would imagine them to be. So a plane is just a simple 3D plane. So if I click that, I'm going to have this little square. Now it's a flat square that's appeared in my, my scene. And up here in the collection, you can see that it's listed out now. Plane. Now I could rename this. So I could double click on this over here and I could call it something like ground. Now this, they're going to stay in alphabetical order, so they'll shift around. Um, and I've got my cube, and I've got my ground, my light, and my camera. Those are all the things. And you can see if I click on them up here, it's actually going to cycle through them. So that's another way to navigate your scene. So let's click on the ground now, and let's make it really big. So it's like ground, right? Now I can come over here and I can select the scale tool. Now the scale tool gives me the X, Y, and Z coordinates, but instead of moving it, uh, it's actually you can scale it in those directions. But let's say you want to scale on all those directions at the same time to keep the same size of your square. Well, you can hover over this to find out. Oh, look, S. That's the, the hotkey for scale. So if I hit S to scale and I just drag my mouse, you can see that this ground gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it fills my view. Now I've got this really big ground. Now, how can we color this, right? How could we actually make this look like something? And more importantly, how could we then turn this into an image that we could, you know, share with our friends? The first thing you need to do is you need to look through a camera. So Blender needs a camera in order to know what to render. Uh, now, when I say render, that's a word that means 
taking the image, all this, the components that are in your scene and turning them into an image that you can look at. So it's a finished image. So if I jump into my camera, I want to see what my camera sees. So I can jump into it a couple of ways. I can click this little icon, which will toggle the camera view. And you can see there the shortcut is number pad zero. So if you've got a full keyboard with a number pad uh, at the, on the side, you can hit the zero key and it'll automatically jump into the camera. If you don't have that, you can just come up here and click that icon and you'll jump into the camera. Now, when you're looking through a camera, we've got this dark gray and this light gray. But the light gray section is what our camera sees. This is everything that's outside of the view of our camera. Now, if I want to move around, you can see I click my mouse button and up, oh, it's going to snap me right out of my camera. So we're not actually changing the camera at all when we're looking through it. So I click this button back into my camera now. But if you would like to link the two together, because that's sometimes the easiest way to move the camera, there's a little side menu here. If we go to view, the view tab, you can come down to this button right here, lock camera to view or camera to view, right? Now, if I move around, you can see I'm actually, my camera, I'm staying inside the camera. So now I can position the camera however I want. Okay, so let's say we stop here. All right, that's pretty good. I can come over here and drag this out of the way. Now I want to create some materials so that my scene can be rendered. So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about rendering. There's a couple of tabs here that are always around, no matter what you have selected. So if I select cube, ground, light, you can see these top gray ones and this red world, they're kind of separated. These top ones are always going to stay the same because these actually pertain to your scene as a whole. So they don't pertain to the object you have selected. This tab represents the world, and this is where we can change the color of our world. So right here it says color. If you click that, you can make it brighter or darker. Now we're not going to see a difference because we're not looking at a rendered view, right? We're just looking at what's called the, the viewport shading view. So it's not going to show us the color of our world. Um, this is for rendering. Let's go up to the first tab. Now, the first tab is automatically, you see render engine is the first thing it says and it's set to Eevee. Now, there are three different render engines in Blender, but Eevee is a great one to get started with because it's a real-time renderer. This is actually a really new bit of technology that um, hasn't really been available in the past. You're really lucky if you're starting 3D now because this used to be a very slow process. Eevee speeds things up a lot. We can actually see instantly in our viewport what our final render is going to look like. It's just like a video game the same kind of rendering technology that goes on. Let's have a look at what Eevee is showing us. I'm going to click this button right up here at the top. Now, these are the different view modes. So I could click this one to see the, my view in wireframe modes. This is just going to show me the wireframe of all of my objects. Um, then I saw the viewport shading mode that we had before. And I'm going to come all the way to the end to the rendered view. OK, now this is going to render the scene. So now I'm looking at a finished render of my scene. But you can see it can still move around in it and it stays. It keeps updating live. So now that I've got a view, um, I want to move my light. So I'm going to select my light up here. I'm going to hit G to grab. And I'll just move my mouse. You can see that the shadow is moving around on my light. Now, let's say I want to have two lights. I could come up here and go add and down to the light menu. And I could create another point light or I could create one of these other types of lights. Another way is, and this works for every object in your scene, you can select an object and hit Shift D. Shift D is the hotkey to duplicate an object. So you can see now I've got this other light. I'll bring it over here. Now I can come to my light tab over here and I can change the, the controls for this light. So I can say, all right, I want my power to be a bit less. I'm going to drag this power down. So I'll bring it right down, right down, just dim it off and you can see that update live. Now, I might also want to change the color so I can clip the color here and I can come over here. Let's make this like a red color and now I'll select my other light and let's make this maybe a bit of a blue color. Now, let's say we want to color our cube. So I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to come down to this bottom tab. This is the materials tab and I'm going to click new here to create a new material and a material is basically well, it's what it sounds like. It's a surface. It's it's uh, shows the computer how to make something look how to color its surface, what color to paint it, basically. Now, there's a lot of controls here, and you don't have to understand all this stuff, but you can just come in into base color. I mean, that does what you would think it would do. It gives us a base color for our object. So I could come here and make my cube red. There we go. That's really nice. Now, you could play around with all of these settings uh, and see what they do. You could turn your metallic up to make it look like a metal cube. Uh, you can turn your roughness down to make reflections happen. And there's a lot of really exciting things that go on inside this stack of, of options. So play around with it. All right. So I've got a cube. I've got a plane and I've got some lights in my scene. But let's say I want to change my cube a little bit. In Blender, whenever you want to change an object, 
that's made of mesh, which this is made of mesh. This is a polygon object. It's in our mesh section when we added it in. It's a mesh cube. If I hit the tab key, I'm gonna go into what's called edit mode. Now you can see your modes up here. So I'm set to edit mode. Normally we're in object mode, but with this object selected and hitting tab takes us into edit mode. And now I get a whole bunch of new commands and options that I can do. I can come over here and check these out. I've got extrude region, which is the hotkey E. I've got inset faces, I've got bevel. Now you may not know what any of these do, but it's fun to try and experiment. But what's really important to know going into this is that there are three modes, uh, three objects in edit mode that are really important. The first are vertices, which are selectable when we have vertex mode set. Vertexes are these single points. All these points make up my cube. I've got edge mode. Now the edges are represented by the thing that's in between the points. What line connects a point? And then we have faces. And the faces are when you have three or more uh, edges that all link up in a single plane and it allows you to have something called a face. These are polygon faces. A polygon means it is a face with four sides. I've got these different things and I can use these tools with these different modes, edges, faces, and vertices. So let's say we select the top uh, face there and let's try this uh, first one. Let's just hit E, let's just grab that one to extrude. The hotkey is, e, is E to extrude. And you can see I can drag this up and it will extrude. It will add new faces. It will expand this thing out. I can also now modify or change it by let's say going to the scale. So let's say we scale this down. And now you can see we're actually forming something that looks kind of like a house or a roof. Now what I could do is I could say, all right, I'm gonna select this face and let me click this next one, inset faces. All right, so you get this nice handle. Now I can just drag this around until I see something happen. Oh, cool, look at that. I've got this inset face. Now you can combine these. So I could go inset, I could let's extrude this now. I'm gonna push this in and I'll go in like that. Now let's say bevel, let's try that one. I'll click that and I'll pull this. Now if I'm happy with that, I can hit tab to exit edit mode. And there we go, now I've got myself this, this cool shape. Now, in Eevee, in order to get things to look really nice, there's a couple of quick tick boxes I like to always turn on. So if you come back up to the render settings here, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and this next one here, screen space reflections. Those three make things look really, really nice. And as you can see, it's already taken up, taken a nice step up in terms of the way it looks. Now that we've done all that, let's come over to the world tab and let's change the environment. Now remember, we didn't see anything happen before when we changed this, but now that we're in render view, we should be able to see. So I'm gonna make this a bit blue and you can see, there we go, it starts to change. So I'm gonna blue this scene up and I might come back to this lamp here, turn it right up so make it really bright. And I'll just move it around until I get, get some nice shadows there inside my object. Now, one last thing I'll show you that's really helpful to make cool images is to place a different material on a single surface within an object. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna to go to edit mode, make sure I'm in face mode, and I'll click this interface. And now I'm gonna come over to my material tab, and I'll click this plus symbol. This will add a new material to my object. So I now have two materials on this object. I'm gonna click new to make this a new material, and I'm gonna click assign. And this will assign this new material to whatever I've got selected. So we only have this one face selected, so it's assigning this second material to that one face. Now, if I come down here to the very bottom, I have this thing called emission and emission strength. Emission is a material property that allows a material to shine, uh, shine light into your scene. I'm gonna give it a red color, and I'm gonna turn my strength right up. I'll leave edit mode, go back over to object mode. You can see now I've got this bright section here. It's just glowing really nicely. Now, once you've finished an image like this and you're, you're happy with it and you'd like to go ahead and render this out, there's one final step to getting an image out of Blender into the real world. Let's come down to this next tab right here. This is where you can set the resolution of your final image. So we've got to set by default to 1920 by 1080, which is this widescreen format. Now, if I'm doing an animation, I've got the frame start and end. So these are all the different frames in my frame rate. But in our case, we're just trying to render one still image. All you have to do is when you're ready to render, you make sure you're happy with the way things are looking. You come over here to the very top, there's this render drop down menu, and we're gonna click render image. After you click that, Blender will go think for a second and then it renders this image for you. And when you're done, you can click image, save, and then you can select wherever you wanna save it, call it cube and click save. There we go. And now we've rendered our first image and saved it out. And we can go post it up online. Now. 
This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more you can do with this software, but I hope that this has given you enough basic sort of groundwork that you can start to play. And that's half the fun of Blender. You will learn more if you give yourself freedom to play. Now, I hope you found this tutorial encouraging and you're feeling really empowered now to start making your own stuff. There's a whole lot more you can learn and I'd encourage you to check out cgcookie.com to figure that stuff out. So keep on growing, learn and find out all you can about 3D art. You're gonna be able to become an amazing Blender artist if you stick at it. So I hope you will. Can't wait to see what you come up with. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. See you later, bye.